Here we have a handsome quarter horse with her a little lower than the croup, which is typical of quarter horses. He's also in a growth stage class just turned five. So his croup is taller than his wither. He appears to have this normal uh, top line sag right here, but as we know, when he's in motion, that sag is going to disappear on a young horse with a healthy back. For instance, if I tickle his belly, you can see how high up he would be able to lift into all the room that we build into our saddles. So you would not want to ever order a, 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 put a center shim to add more pressure to this center. We'll just use a simple shoulder shim, which I'll show you later, positioned just behind where his scapula will swing so that he has full range of motion of that shoulder and we lift saddle pressure off that working shoulder. It's so simple, just one shim will do it on almost every horse. So, we'll assume that Flash's scapula is going to start out in this position. Here's the back edge. And Rhett, can you lift his leg and let's see how far back it swings. In full stride, Flash's scapula will swing all the way back to here. So that is where I would want to put inside his pad a shim that is thick here and tapers and feathers into his body to make a nice transition with the saddle and pad. I'll put it right there so that it sinks into the foam of the pad, which we'll show you, and lifts that pressure off all of this action. The more he can do that, the deeper he can get his hindquarters underneath him, and um, the more these back muscles can round up and push up into all the room we build in our saddles. All right, here we have one of our smart pads, which has all sorts of high-tech features that we've spent many years researching and developing for you. You can find information elsewhere on our website about that. I won't take the time. But inside is this wonderful foam, which will compress from three quarters of an inch down to less than one quarter of an inch, which will enable you to feel very close to your horse in harmony, while the impact deflection factor of this keeps your horse very, very comfortable, If should you have a pressure point. Now, obviously, not having a pressure point is the ideal, and that's what we strive very hard for in building our saddle systems. But uh, we are going to ensure that this horse is very, very comfortable, and here's how. We utilize this pad with its all its thermodynamic um, and performing um, qualities. We are going to remember we said that Flash's scapula swung back to here, so we're going to put the shim in the pad to sink into that foam back there in that position. We don't want to put the shim too far forward because that will impede that shoulder action. And our objective is to utilize the shim to protect the working shoulder, also to lift the front of the saddle just enough to provide you with a good balance point position so that you can be um, on the back edge of your seat bones and in harmony with what you're asking your horse to do in his body. So here's what we do. We put the shim via this Velcro opening, slide it back to there, right about there. We make sure that we do the same thing on the other side so it's equal and uh, the horse can feel well balanced. We've got nice wither clearance here. If you needed to add shims uh, along the back for any other reason while your horse recovers a healthy top line, uh, there is a Velcro opening up here too. Uh, there are lots of ways to access. The other thing is, should I have guessed wrong about where is the best place to put that shim, for Flash's comfort to make sure I could reach in and feel he has shoulder clearance or for my balance point to be far enough back. I, all I have to do is not, to, I don't have to go to the trouble of totally unsaddling. I can loosen the girth and reach in and shift that position a little bit. The other day I realized that Flash had been in a growth mode and I needed to move that shim just one inch forward and he felt more shoulder clearance. He may eventually be a super wide horse, so we're in between. He felt more shoulder clearance, my balance point was perfect, his sweat marks were perfect, and that's all it took, just a little and it's worth the trouble. All right, so here we have our saddle set up, plenty of wither clearance, plenty of uh, room behind here. I can tell that I can reach all the way back to the stirrup bar area, which is where the main pressure, the weight bearing pressure of the saddle is. You would never want that pressure to be forward of where that scapula needs to swing back. So this is good. The one shim is providing that, that lift 
of the saddle. It looks like my balance point is going to be nice right here. So the front of the saddle is lifted off the working shoulder. I'll be in a nice position to access my balance point. If the saddle were nose down and the, the balance point looked like it were more here, I would add one more shim. I always check to make sure that the pad and saddle are centered front to back. So you've got as much pad sticking out the pack as you do the front, then you know it's centered on the, the nice foam cells or air cells in there in the case of the Theraflex. And uh, this is a size medium pad with our Western Dressage saddle, which is about as tight as you would want it to be. Some people like more pad if they're carrying a pack on the trail. I like a little bit less, just enough. Goldilocks in the porch, just enough. So you've got comfort for your horse. Um, and if it's too short, you, you might end up with rubbing at the loin, so you wouldn't want that either. We make this pad in three sizes. This is the medium. Uh, the medium is 30 inches along the top line, front to back, so that you have a yardstick of measure. And uh, the small is 28 inches, and the large is 32. So with Keeper, with this longer back and slightly lower center, Slightly, she comes up, but there's still a little room that it might connect her well with the saddle if we put this taper point of the thick part of the shim right at her scapulous backswing point, and then this will provide a nice ramp of connection with that nice roomy saddle for her to be encouraged to push her back up. So we'll put this shim in the pad. I put the shim in the pad right about there. So the front edge of the narrow part is uh, kind of right up against the Velcro opening. And this thick part is back here uh, doing its job. And it's really easy. If we guess wrong and need to shift it just a little bit for better balance point, that's not difficult to do at all, even while she's saddled. So make sure we have them um, up along the top of the pad here so that there's, of course, there's clearance here. So the top of the foam comes from here and that leaves us all the space we need to protect her spine and have the saddle, pad, and shims resting on her long back muscles instead of any precious uh, ligaments or spinal column. So that will do it. Let's saddle up. This is one of our Western Cruisers, this particular model is made with a double back skirt here where normally the Western Cruiser would have a single to make it a more diminutive saddle. Great little trail saddle. This one has the, the Western horn. We make the Western Cruiser with or without a horn. Um, we have the long center shim in here for Keeper, our 14-year-old mare, who I happen to know loves that connection uh, when she's carrying me or anybody else in the saddle and I can reach all the way back to the stirrup bar even while she's standing because the thick part of that shim is back here lifting the front of the saddle pressure off the shoulder. As with all of our Western saddles, I, I should mention that we like to have a very short cinch hobble connecting the back cinch to the front cinch so the pressure is shared at the sternum, not the soft belly area of the horse. And this back cinch serves to stabilize the back of the saddle uh, as you travel and again give good overall connection because the tree inside there is moving with the horse um, just enough to be very very comfortable. So one shim did it again and that is quite typical. I would say one shim should solve 95% of the horse spitting issues out there with the proper saddle. Here we have Dino the Pasifino, who is a 15-year-old horse who doesn't get too very much exercise being ridden. He has a little bit of a sag in the back, but because when he is ridden, he's ridden in very good saddles, he does have the power to come up to be almost a straight line between here and here. Because his back um, is not as strong as a very well-exercised horse, we could shim him one of two ways. We could utilize this center shim, which has the taper point right here, which we would put right at his scapula's maximum back swing point, and that thereby the thick part of this shim would lift the front of the saddle off all of that action, 
that a gated animal actually any animal needs good shoulder clearance but we find that uh, gated animals animals prefer our saddles when we test them against gated horse saddles let's see how far back you know scappy little swing could you help us Brett? thank you Brett fincher for stopping by today okay there there is where his scapula is so I, you could shim, do you know, with one shim in two ways. Either with a shoulder shim like this, so the thick part lifts all pressure of the saddle off that working shoulder, or with this taper point right there. Inside the pad, of course, you want good connection with the saddle. We did, uh, we did not illustrate whether or not Dino is uphill or downhill, but he looks quite level. So it shouldn't be difficult at all to make certain that the rider is on his or her balance point back here for a healthy stride. We're going to use uh, an English saddle on Dino today, utilizing one of our little half pads, which has the same size um, smart foam protection for the horse and contouring capacity as our large pads. But with English saddles particularly, their leather can tolerate horse sweat, so it gets you even closer to your horse if you uh, don't have a whole lot of big thick pad down here and you could use your uh, show blanket or numna on top of it if you uh, wanted to ride with your own colors um, this pad is perfect okay so we will be putting either a shoulder shim back here inside the pad pocket that's what i've got it for now or a center shim we would position it like this, so the very front of the fin is probably right at the Velcro opening, and therefore this taper point of where it sticks to fin would be right at his scapula backswing point. Either of these would work. I think we'll try, um, in this case, for the English saddle, I think we will just go ahead and leave it like it is, and we can experiment as to which is better down the road, but you really can't go too far wrong. So. We here we have our English general purpose fluidity saddle set up uh, properly on Dino. We are, with an English saddle, we make certain that the under flap of our dual flaps or the front of the mono flap is right at the horse's back edge of his scapula. That provides room for the girth to be about a hand's breadth behind the elbow, which is good. The length of the girth is good for Dino, it's just a 22 incher. And remember, short girths help with stability, uh, help with stability, much better than long girths, plus they're a good deal more comfortable for your horse. When the, when the girth is cinched tight up here and the buckles are against the ribs or the heart vein, it's really pretty miserable for your horse. Um, we've got the one shoulder shim back here at the, the horse's maximum scapula back swing point. It looks to be lifting the saddle enough so that when the rider is in here, and the balance point is here, two fingers um, on the pommel would make for a straight line to the top of the candle. And that's a good way to set up your general purpose saddle um, for nice shoulder clearance, good rider balance point, and all that makes things perfect. We'll be tightening this up as this foam compresses. Of course, as I tightened the girth, I held my hand in here to make sure we didn't drive any pressure down on the wither. So this will conform on to Dino's back in such a way that it will compress and the rider will be very, very close and moving in harmony 